Hello, and welcome to Meet the Author with the Layman Library, presented by the North Little Rock Public Library System. I'm Derek, and I'd like to thank you for joining us. Today, we're excited to have two guests with us, author Cecilia Wilson and co-author Eve Rolfka Harris. For over a decade, Cecilia Wilson has been the feature writer for Searcy Living Magazine and is the author of the nonfiction World War II book, Back to Bremen. Back to Bremen depicts the World War II story of Marta Ropka, a mother who risks everything so her children might survive the war that has come to their doorstep. Seen through the eyes and memories of Marta's daughter, Edith, Back to Bremen depicts her harrowing journey through war-torn Germany. It's a story of the fear of a child and the sheer determination of a mother risking it all through Allied bombing raids, capture, and the horrors of the Third Reich to keep her children safe so they can return home. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you both for being here. It is a tremendous honor. Thank you so much for the invitation. I, I love um, talking about this book, so um, and I love bringing Edith with me. She lived the story. I just wrote it. <laughs> Tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Uh, Cecilia, you go first. Um, I was born and raised in Batesville, Arkansas. Uh, moved to central Arkansas, oh my goodness, um, probably in the uh, early 80s. Um, my husband is a pastor, and that's where I met Edith. Mm -hmm. She and her husband, Hank, were church members there. And I found out about her story when I was writing a little snippet for our little church newsletter. I also write for magazines. Um, it, it is a beautiful story. And only after her husband died did I realize I needed to know the rest of the story. There was so much more to it. So, okay. Edith? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, well, I live in Cabot mm -hmm. and since 75. And and my husband uh, was in the Air Force. So he retired from the post office and the Air Force both. So. And tell him where you were born. Oh, I was born in, in Germany. Okay. Bremen, and uh, went to the war, and from the beginning to the end, which it started already in '39, and the Americans started '42. So, all right. Well, I'm glad you're here, and so we thank you. We'll get into your story in just a minute. I am curious, though, because a lot of times potential authors mm -hmm. watch this program. How did the two of you collaborate? It was really fun. Um, I, I have been a writer for Cersei Living Magazine for 20 years or so. And uh, initially, when I first started writing, it was all about fiction for me. But writing for Cersei Living, I, I'm the feature writer, um, brought me into the the... Uh, world of interviewing people and getting their stories, getting true stories. And I found that I love nonfiction. I love those stories. Telling those stories is so interesting. So um, hearing Edith's story was um, so much fun because I realized this is a really interesting story that I've, I've got to get this down on paper. I wrote about it in short magazine articles uh, over the years. Um, but writing an article is so different than writing a book. There's so many more details. We, I would go to her house. I conv finally convinced her, we need to write a book. Let me write a book about this. And uh, if I never find a publisher, you've got a great family history. So I would go to her house, I think once every Thursday, probably yes. for several months. Um, and I would get the rest of the story. I, I, I knew the surface. Uh, but we sat down over, I like to say, over Dr. Peppers and, and popcorn. <laughs> and um, and she would be remembering things that she hadn't thought of in 70 years. Mm -hmm. So there were lots of laughs. There were certainly some tears. 
um, things that she hadn't thought about, uh, things that she didn't want to think about, you know, too. Um, so it was, it was, um, you know, there was lots of interviewing. There was lots of research to make sure that I had facts right about, uh, different events during her life and how that fit in with the war, what was happening, the bombings that were happening. Um, and then as I would write a chapter, I would, I would ask her to read each chapter, make sure that I had my facts correct. Her oldest brother um, uh, was still living in Bremen and Carl Heinz, we would, uh, she would talk to him to ask him questions if some, something maybe she wasn't clear on. So he helped, uh, I guess, collaborate a little bit, you know, here and there on things too. So it was a really fun process. It really was. I loved every minute of it. I enjoyed it. <laughs> we had fun. We did. A lot of fun. <laughs> Did your pub because publishers can sometimes be uh, persnickety? Is that was there anything that they told you you had to take out, or when you submitted it the first time they said it just is fine, but you've got to add more? Did you have any problems like that? You know, it took me. Um, or was there anything you did you wanted to put in that maybe Edie didn't ah, want you to put in that's that you're willing to? Maybe talk about. I realize maybe you you tell me well, or tell them. Yeah, it's <laughs> an interesting question. Um, the um, the process of finding a publisher was interesting. Mm -hmm. I'd actually been uh, through it before and got a lot of no's on, on other projects. Mm -hmm. uh, but on this one, I went to agents, I went to publishers. Certainly as a writer, it needs to be pretty clean or they're not going to look at it. And you want to follow their um, procedures on mm -hmm. how they want it presented to them. Uh, a lot of them will tell you if you don't give it to us the way we want it submitted, we're not even going to consider it. So it needed to be pretty clean. I really made sure that I followed their guidelines when I submitted it. Um, they were really good. What's, what's interesting about that too, and I tell um, students this a lot when I talk to them about writing, don't just think it's clean and ready to go. Pour over it and over and over. You're, there's still probably going to be mistakes. But one of the first things they did when I finally did have a publisher that, that gave me a contract and wanted it was they assigned an editor to me. So mm. we went through the editing process again. That I thought was fun. My editor was from Missouri State University. And um, he had lots of suggestions, but he was very free-handed and let me um, go with it where I wanted to. So there were no suggestions of pulling out or adding to. There were suggestions about, um, you know, the this paragraph needs to be a little smoother, it's too choppy, you know, things like that, certainly in the editing process. Um, there was one segment of the book that I did not include out of respect for Edith. There is a, a, a part of the book where we talk about uh, her father who was uh, caught in an uh, interesting situation. Mm -hmm. Edith did not want me to share that at all. Mm -hmm. And I finally convinced her <laughs> that it did tie in with uh, him going to the front later. So we really needed it in the book. But I also respected her um, privacy. There were some some details of that that she did not uh, did not want to share, they are not included in the book. Out of respect for Edith and okay. and, the, and the family story. So, what has been the reception of the book? Uh, it's it's an adult book, but it's also a ch young person's book. What has been the uh, the res response you've gotten? Let's say from audiences that you've spoken to about it, or you've been on the radio, or mm -hmm. letters, or whatever. It's really interesting. Uh, it does cover a wide range of, of, of an audience. Mm -hmm. um, I've spoken to groups as young as fourth graders mm -hmm. um, and certainly to veterans. So, you know, the entire uh, gamut of, of ages in between. Um, for older people, there is a connection. You know, there's a lot of people that have a connection. They were either stationed in, in Germany at some point, you know, even into the 50s or later. Um, other people from Germany. Um, other people are just simply World War II um, avid readers. They love, you know, the history of it, history buffs. Um, and then a lot of children, of course, a lot of students from different uh, age groups 
are studying World War II and, and know a little bit about it. What I do love about Edith's story is it's a very different perspective of the war. Edith was convinced that no one would be interested in reading her story. I convinced her differently. Um, certainly, there are plenty of books that have the World War II um, niche uh, saturated. But you rarely hear of a story from the German home front. Mm -hmm. How were German um, families affected by it? So the focus of this book, particularly Especially after I talked to her, Jewish. Yes, non-Jewish, exactly. We we know about the Holocaust. I'm thrilled that history's out there. We, mm -hmm. we want to learn from history and not repeat it. But we know very rarely do we hear of anything from just a regular German family. How were they affected? I loved her story because um, once we started getting down and getting the details, I realized this story was certainly Edith's childhood mm -hmm. growing up in the war, but it really is about her mother, Marta, yeah. and what this ordinary German mother, who had no ambitions of being anything, uh, any VIP of any kind, but what she did to, to um, unwittingly, suppose I guess, uh, to be a, the heroine of the story. Um, and, and I always tell people that um, that's something we can all aspire to. We can just be common people, and if we're heroes to no one else other than our children, wow, what a life we've led. And, and I realize this story really is about her mother. And, and I always like to point this out. This is a perfect place to do this. Um, one of the fun things that I couldn't wait to do when we were publishing this book was doing the graphic design with, with my publisher. I think they did a beautiful job. Um, there's a picture of some war damage from Bremen during the war. Um, but if you'll notice at the very top of the book, it looks like clouds, but you'll see a pair of eyes there. And those are her mother's eyes. Mm. Those are Marta's eyes. I just, I love that. And it made Edith cry, so I knew we were on just right there. So. <laughs> okay. At this point, why don't we, before we get into any details of the text, why don't you pick a section or okay. read from the section that you have chosen? Okay. Love to. Um, this is early in the war. Uh, Marta has seven children, but she's expecting an eighth. They're having air raids frequently in Bremen because they're making U-boats and warplanes there. So these children are living through war. Uh, this is 1940. This is before the United States is in. Uh, but they're already knowing the serious ramifications of living in war. This is just a paragraph. But on a cold evening in late November 1940, we were at home when the first air raid sirens' sad moan filled the night air. After we hastily donned our coats, Mother grabbed Waltraut's hand while Gunther held little Inga's, and the rest of us paired up in quick succession. We threw open the front door and began running across the street toward the bunker. Because Mother was only a few weeks away from giving birth, she and Valtraut were not able to keep up the same pace as the rest of us, and they were soon lagging behind. Gunther and Carl Hines turned their heads toward her, yelling and urging her on. We were nearly at the bunker, and then it happened. Mother tripped and fell. How much do you remember, or how much are you willing to make comments on that passage? Oh, I yeah, I remember that well because we were all scared because we had to go to the bunker without mm -hmm. our mother. Sorry, <laughs> but uh, once we got in there, you know, everybody helped. And we didn't know anything about my mom. Mm -hmm. These are children, even at the tender age that she was, mm -hmm. these are children that know what happens to people who don't make it to the bunker. Yeah. yeah. She remembers walking out of the bunker, seeing not only war damage, but um, dead bodies. Yes. So these are children that have to grow up fast. Yes. So uh, to know your mother's in the middle, and she did not... Without giving it away, uh, for those who might want to read it, um, her mother does not make it to the bunker that night. Mm -hmm. So it's a scary time for these children who have to go in without their mother. And who insisted that, that they go in without her, too. Yeah. And we didn't know the next day what happened, you know, and that was 
had a brother. <laughs> yes. And he survived. Yes. He survived. Yes. 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 So. <laughs> so, but a uh, midwife delivered him. Okay. There were no doctors around. In the middle of an air raid. Yeah. Amazing well, stuff. I can imagine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All that stress and fear and yes. whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, bunker was a second home. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yes. Because we had to go, you know, there were lots of times at night we went for the bunker back home. Well, there was no electricity, no water, no nothing. You know, everything was gone. But uh, that we didn't even uh, how do I say that? You had to spend a lot of nights there, right? Didn't know what yeah. was happening outside. Yeah, we did, and then you know we didn't even took our clothes off, we just went to bed with our clothes on because the silent no tell them when they come back. Mm -hmm. So we were ready to run for safety. Yes. So that was day in and day out. So so that like I said, that in the daytime we were told it was the Americans, and at night it was the English. Yes. So there was always somebody. Mm. And until the, today, they still got uh, sightseeing places they made out of it. For mm. people, yeah, Ooh. they did the bunkers, and okay. then on top of the bunker, they put like flowers, you know, landscaping. Sure. Uh -huh. and. So they just charge you for going to the book. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I think I think we I know I because mm -hmm. uh, I do love history. We're accustomed to thinking of World War II as as 1941 to 1945, and what I realized in writing this story is for the Rucka family mm -hmm. began in 1939 when they invaded uh, Poland in September. Mm -hmm. Got her, her, her dad, and took him from the uh, dinner table and told him he was in the German army. Yes. So it began in 39, long before we were involved, certainly as a country. Um, and for the Rutka family, it didn't end in 45. Um, they, um, they did make it back from East Germany, where they had uh, been relocated for some time. Um, without with, with a lot of trouble, I might add. But by the time they got home... Um, their world had to start all over again. Yes. 45 might have been the end of the war, but there was nothing left for them to go home to. Uh, family members are missing. Um, so I take the book to about, I think, 48, 49, almost a decade, to wrap it up for the reader so they'll know the rest of the story. So where, again, where we think of it as 41 to 45, certainly began and ended a lot. Uh, it was a lot longer than that, mm -hmm. certainly for the Rutka family. Well, I found the, towards the end of the book, to be incredibly sus suspenseful when you're near Dresden and you're trying to get back to the western part of the country to avoid getting captured by the Soviets. And then yes. your family gets captured by some soldiers and just having to outrun them. It just, it was a thriller at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, you couldn't have done it had it been... Fiction. It just right. you did a great job. I mean, I'm you. sorry you went through that story, right. but you did a great job of writing about it. You don't know unless you turn to the last page. You don't know who's going to get out alive. Yes. And just you did a great job. It was just a harrowing experience. Yeah. And, and again, what I find so fascinating about that is this is headed by a little German mother. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's not a big woman, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it, it's true. In any country, uh, you know, you, you don't mess with the baby bears when the mama bears around. Uh, yes. and, I, and we all will do a lot when we have to to make sure our children are safe. I think it's amazing what Marta did. Mm. Edith's life could have been so different had one or two things 
changed had Martha not done one of two things. Mm -hmm. um, they could have been hauled off to you know Siberia mm -hmm. as a family. Yeah. They could have um, they could have uh, stayed in the East and she could have been raised in um, communist East Germany. That's yeah. right. So. That's true in all of our lives, yeah. certainly, but all of our lives aren't necessarily history in the making, yeah. you know, necessarily, uh, to, that, mm -hmm. to that degree, certainly. So that's what I think is so amazing about Marta. Yeah. Um, and, and her daughter's pretty <coughs> resilient and amazing, too. <laughs> she really is. Bye-bye. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, when we got to the border, you, know, you have to show proof that mm -hmm. you're off the west mm -hmm. or north. Uh, because this was East Germany, so we had to show proof. And at that time, they didn't have a regular gate. They just had a tree across the street, mm. the Americans. So they had to lift the tree oh, yes. to let us in. Mm -hmm. After my mom had sold her uh, papers in her lining and the jacket, her suit jacket. <laughs> and she... Uh, in the meantime, there was this jeep coming with the Russians. Because they know people, I mean, it wasn't just us, everybody else, too, trying to get back to north, to the west, you know. So it was just, the tree wasn't even down, and the Russian would have got us through. Yeah. So they're fortunate to get through yes. the border. Yeah. But again, what a brave woman! Yes, yes. What, what a brave mother to think and do the things. Well, we always that had she to did. be quiet. Yes, mm -hmm. we yeah, couldn't. Yes. We couldn't say anything. I tried to keep seven kids. Two little kids <laughs> quiet. <laughs> yeah. I don't see how yeah. she did it. Yeah, I can imagine. Mm. Yes, yeah. but everything was, you know, mandatory. So we had to do it to save our lives. I am curious about one thing. Do you know if the house that you were living in, is it still there today? No. Okay. No, it's gone. Our house was bombed three times. Oh, okay. Are you talking about the one in Bremen? Yes, the one in Bremen, yes. You know, the one that... Because I was, didn't know whether or not through industrialization, if they just raised it and built a shopping center. I think yeah. when, when they went back to Bremen, everything mm -hmm. was pretty much gone. Okay. They yes. couldn't even... You couldn't even... Without land, uh, landmarks, it's really hard to even know what neighborhood you're in. Yeah, so okay. I think everything was gone. They had oh, to stay in some police barracks initially. Yeah. And, okay. But now the house that they were in when they were near Dresden, in, in Kremhamsdorf. Um, oh, at least in the 80s, maybe it's still standing, but I know in the 80s or 90s, that house was still standing. I actually found that on Google Earth at one point. So I think that one is still standing in the little village near Dresden. Yeah. Now, if members of the audience want to contact you or if they want to purchase the book, how can they reach you through social media? Um, I have a Facebook page, Cecilia Wilson. And you can talk, you can talk yeah. to the audience. Um, I have a Facebook page. It is uh, Cecilia Wilson. That's C-E-C-E-L-I-A, Wilson author. I uh, also have a, a website, backtobremen.com. Uh, and we do love, Edith and I both do love to go and speak to, and we have over the years, so many different groups. So we we love telling the story, so we'd love to, to be invited. You can find my contact information there. The book is also sold in Barnes & Noble, um, Amazon.com, obviously. Um, it is a beautiful story, and we love talking about it. So um, feel free to reach out to me by email, and I hope you enjoy the book. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. It has been a pleasure. If you're interested in reading more from Ms. Wilson, please visit us at the library or find us online at Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or our website, nlrlibrary.org. Please join us again next time and have a great day, everyone.